We recently got cheeky at the Institute of Molecular Biosciences at the University of Queensland. Professor Glenn King invited us to his lab to chat about developing new drugs for brain disorders. A cheeky warning, Professor King is a big fan of spiders. So welcome Professor King from the Institute of Molecular Biosciences. How are you feeling today? Very good, thank you. Thank you for joining us today to chat about your research which relates to neurological disorders including Glad epilepsy. Tell us a bit about the research you do here. We're interested in developing drugs for nervous system disorders where neurons like Nix and Nelly here have a defect in their membrane in something called ion channels, which are like little gates that let ions in and out of the cell. So we're trying to develop drugs for nervous system disorders like chronic pain, epilepsy and stroke. Where do you look for these potential new drugs? It's a great question. So we use venomous animals and the reason we do that is that these little gates on Nix and Nelly's membrane are, are found in the insects that uh, venomous animals like spiders and centipedes and scorpions prey on. So over several hundreds of millions of years, they've developed molecules that target those ion channels in Nix and Nelly, and, and we're taking advantage of that and trying to find ones that might be deleterious to an insect, but are actually beneficial to humans. So you're using venoms to help us. How does that work? So those ion channels, those little gates in Nix and Nelly's membranes, they're in the neurons of insects as well, but they're slightly different and they're in slightly different neurons. And so the same molecules that might kill an insect, they could target the same gate, the same ion channel in the human, but actually have a beneficial effect because that ion channel is in a different location. What kinds of venomous animals do you work with? So mainly spiders, and we're gonna, we're gonna meet one of them in a minute. Um, uh, but also things like scorpions. Uh, one of our favourite ones are assassin bugs that have not been studied very well. And very ironically, the best place we found to collect them is the local cemetery, which seems quite appropriate for an assassin bug. <laughs> but we're also looking at venomous caterpillars as well. There's a whole range of venomous invertebrates. We're not interested in snakes and, 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 and lizards because they target the cardiovascular system and we're after things that target neurons like Nix and Nelly. Does that mean that reptile venom isn't useful for drug discovery? There have been some excellent cardiovascular drugs that actually come from snakes, but of course that's not our interest with nervous system diseases. Are these venoms all from Australian animals or is there a range? Look, a wide variety from all around the world because you never know which venom is going to have the magic molecule that will do the thing that you want it to do in terms of developing a therapeutic. So, we now have venom from 700 different species of animals from all around the world, basically all continents except Antarctica. Um, mostly arachnids, so spiders and scorpions, but also a range of other things as well. That's a lot of venom. Are these venomous animals scary or just cheeky? <laughs> so we would you like to meet Euston, who is an Australian tarantula? We're game if he's cheeky. So, this guy, what they do is when, when you provoke them, they rear up with their front legs and pedipalps in the air to make themselves look really big and aggressive. Mm. Um, but also they have to do that because their fangs move up and down, so to actually target prey they've got to get above it. Whereas modern spiders, the fangs move laterally, so they don't have to do that. So you see him rear up when I provoke him. Mm. So you see him rear up and pretend to be really, really big. He is being big. And so there's Look the fangs you, there, Christian. that's the fangs, Whoa. and he's not very happy about me touching his fangs no, in not. particular, but he hasn't tried to strike me, he's just trying to look very very big and aggressive and make me go away. Houston sure is big and furry, but is he dangerous? The large majority of spiders are completely harmless to humans, including all of the tarantulas, so even the world's biggest tarantula, which is as big as a dinner plate, is completely harmless to us. It'll hurt when it bites you, but there's no, no lasting consequences beyond that. So, so and yet they can be so valuable yes. to things like research. Exactly right. Thank you, Houston. You okay. are amazing. How are venoms from Houston and his friends useful for treating epilepsy? Yeah, well, a lot of epilepsy drugs, as you know, are actually ion channel blockers. Um, and we now know that a lot of genetic epilepsies are caused by mutations in ion channels. The, the problem with the ion channel drugs that are out there 
they're not precision drugs, they're not targeted at a specific iron channel that's defective in a specific epilepsy. So what we're trying to do is develop precision epileptic drugs that target the iron channel that's defective in a particular epilepsy. So Drave syndrome, for example, they have a defective, or not a defective sodium channel, they have less than the normal amount, so we have developed a drug that activates the remaining population of just that sodium channel. So it's, it's a drug just for Strava syndrome and we think that's the future of epilepsy, epilepsy medications is drugs that are specific for that particular epilepsy rather than broadly acting across a range of epilepsies. Will these new drugs lead to better outcomes than existing ones? So for Drave is again a great example. So a lot of the, the anti-epileptic drugs are sodium channel blockers, things like carbamazepine, uh, for example. Um, and that drug actually worsens Drave because you have a defect in the sodium channel. So if you inhibit it even further, you're going to worsen the condition. So a lot of those general anti-epileptic drugs that target iron channels are not good for particular epilepsies in which that iron channel might actually be defective. So I, I think we have to get back to looking at what is the root cause of that epilepsy and how can we specifically target that molecular defect so we've got a precision drug just for the kids with that particular epilepsy. Does the work that you do have potential to help other conditions in the future? So the approach we're using is broadly applicable, I think, to any disease or any epilepsy where there's a specific iron channel that's the root cause of the disease. So we have 700 different venoms and we try to screen as many as we can against the iron channel we're interested in. And I honestly don't care which venomous animal is the winner. I, I do like spiders a lot, but ultimately we've got to think about we're after a molecule that will work for that particular epilepsy and whether the winning molecule is in a spider or a scorpion or a assassin bug or a caterpillar, I don't really care. How does a venom molecule become a drug that people will have access to? So we have some molecules that are working well in some preclinical models of the disease, the epilepsy or the chronic pain disorder that we're interested in. What we need to do is finish off the preclinical experiments and make sure they're safe and they're working uh, efficaciously before we start doing experiments in human patients. Um, and then there's several sets of clinical trials we need to do to ensure that it is safe, it is effective before it will then become a drug and in the marketplace. That sounds like a lot of work. How long will it take? Unfortunately, a very long time. So clinical trials can take a very long time. There's three phases, phase one, two, and three. Um, and these can take anywhere from three to five years. So it's a very slow process, unfortunately. Now, the good thing is for rare disorders, of which many of the epilepsies are, um, the FDA, which is the authority that approves drug use in the USA, gives you what's called expedited um, trials. So you can get through the process more quickly if they feel there's a really desperate need, which there is in the case of many epilepsies, to get that drug to the patients. Well, that's good news. Now, it's time to say thank you to Professor King. Professor King, I'd like to thank you very, very much for your time. Um, I do have a small thank you gift for you. We'd like to Yay. present you with your very a own cheeky, cheeky neuron. <laughs> Thanks again, Professor King. Stay cheeky. Thanks to all the team at the UQ Institute of Molecular Biosciences, especially Houston.